fam you're welcome back to my youtube channel thank you so much for always stopping by my name is omode sola if you are new here kindly hit the subscribe button to my returning subscribers thank you so much for always stopping by you know you rock right <laughs> please share this video to everybody that you know will benefit from it so today we're going to be talking about something very very important i'm going to be talking about ratios ratios is very very important and this is very critical because like almost every eye hand case study examination requires you to do ratios so this is very very important so let's just dive into the video all right so in today's video i'll be telling you we're talking about um we're discussing what are ratios the types of financial statement ratios how to interpret ratios how to know the suitable ratios to compute and common mistakes that you definitely should, should avoid so we're going to be doing that today so let's let's start so basically what are ratios when we talk about ratios all right so what are ratios so let's let's clean this first now financial ratios are basically ratios that are used to assess the relationship between two financial statement line items in order to make judgments and decisions so basically you are looking at two financial statement items two financial statement items and I was, I was trying to look at an example as i was creating the document i was thinking of something remember when we used to do re fractions yes fractions in secondary school primary school when we did fractions that you have oh this fraction over this fraction will give you this like the example i just cleaned off um, not too long ago you have probably something like 10 divided by 5 will give you 2 something like that so yeah you are comparing two figures that's the 10 and the 5 which gave you the 2 right like this two figures so Financial ratios in this case, it's not like mathematical ratios that we look at, oh, probably mathematics, probably the circle, they'll tell you something like divide a circle into four, you have one over four plus one over four plus one over four plus one over four, all those things, those ones are mathematical ratios, right? But in this particular case, we're dealing with financial ratios, financial ratios is what we're dealing with, basically, we're dealing with financial ratios. So we are going to be comparing two financial statement items. So in this case, we're not looking at the divide the circle into four, something like that. In this case, we're looking at financial statement line items. So we're assessing it in order to do what? In order to make judgment and decisions, basically. So we're assessing it to make judgment and to make decisions. So in this case, now this 10 can be probably gross profit. This five can be revenue. So it's this 10 indicates something on the financial statement item, um, line item, and also the five in that sense. So financial ratios are basically used to assess the financial statement. So what, what we're trying to do is that we're trying to make judgment, we're trying to make decisions, right? So we are using those ratios to assess it, to know what is actually really, really going on in the company. Now, assessing the financial statements, line items in the absolute values can be very, very misleading. Now, looking at it, and you're seeing revenue from year one to year three, and you're like, oh, 10, 20, 30, that's year one, 10, year two, 20, year three, 30, and I, oh, revenue is increasing. Revenue can increase, no problem about that. But then the most important thing is that that can be very, very misleading. You may think revenue is actually increasing, but it might actually not be increasing the way it's expected to increase. And in some certain situations, companies have the targets that they want to meet, or want to increase revenue by 20% every year. Is that target being met? Is the strategies that they're applying, are they actually achieving the goals that the company has actually set to achieve? So that's why we need ratios. We cannot just look at the financial statement on its own and be talking about it in that way. We need ratios to actually help us to assess it and make proper interpretations and accurate decisions, basically. So now, in this case, like I said, we have different types of ratios. We have mathematical ratios and all of that. But in I can case study, we're focusing on financial statement ratios. Financial statement ratios. That's what we're focusing on, financial statement ratios. And in this class, we'll just be looking at some. And it's not limited to it. There are all others that you can look at. But in this class, we'll just be looking at some. All right. So the first one we have is the profitability ratio. Now, the profitability ratio is also called the profit ratio. And the purpose of the profitability ratio is basically to assess the company's profit generating capacity. Now, what is the capacity to generate profit? How well is this company generating profit in that year, in every year, from year one to year two, from year three, and as much as they give you, how well are they generating profit? Is there an increase in gen profit generating capacity? Is there a decrease in profit generating capacity? All of that, that's what profitability ratios helps us to assess. 
Now, the second one is the liquidity ratio. The liquidity ratio is also called the working capital ratio. And this helps us to, what, to assess the company's ability to meet short-term obligations. Now, a company has both short-term obligations and long-term obligations. The short-term obligations are obligations that are due within one year, while the long-term obligations are obligations that are due in more than one year, right? So now, liquidity ratios helps us to assess those short-term obligations. Okay, can the company meet its creditors? Now, creditors, obviously, you cannot be, depending on the agreement, actually, but in most situations, creditors you cannot be delaying their payment for five years or three years or two years. Most times, they're usually paid within that year that you collect the inventory, right? So in that case, now, we're going to assess, oh, does the company actually have the capacity to actually pay the creditors? Oh, does the company actually have the, have the capacity to meet the short-term debt, debts that they collect or loans they collect within one year? So liquidity ratios helps us to assess that. The leverage ratios. Leverage ratios are so-called the long-term solvency ratios. They help us to what? Assess the company's capital structure. Now, the capital structure of a company basically is the amount of debt and amount of equity that the company actually uses. Now, that's to say, that, okay, in summary, in simple terms, we're assessing how much debt, how much borrowings, how much borrowings does the company actually use to finance their operations and how much equity shares does the company actually use. In Nigeria language, it's something like, oh, how much base does the company actually use? Is the company acquiring basic like that's what nigerian term we use right is the company acquiring borrowings to actually finance the operations or is the company actually using shares to finance the operation so we're assessing it in that sense now the efficiency ratios are also called the activity ratios the activity ratios helps us to assess the efficient use of resources how well are they efficiently using resources are you using their resources properly the efficiency ratios helps us assess that now the next one is what the investor ratios the investor ratios is also called the shareholder ratios. They help us to, they, this, this helps us to assess the return to investors on the investment. The investors want to know how much am I going to collect on, how much dividend am I collecting per share? They want to know what is my return on equity? They want to know what is my dividend? What is the dividend payout ratio of the company? And their retained earnings and their re retained ratio or earnings retention exactly their earnings retention and their dividend payout so want to know okay are they re really retaining earnings are they paying me well S different things like that the investors want to know before they actually put their money into the company so investor ratio or shareholder ratio helps us to assess the returns to investors on their investments now the financial statement ratios are not basically this not this is not all there are other things you can actually have but basically this is like a major categories of financial statement ratios that we have and this is what we'll be discussing in this particular class moving on interpreting ratios this is very very important because this is where the bulk of marks are awarded this is where your marks are actually really awarded so because this part there's, there's two marks for this your financial statement analysis section covers 32 marks it carries rather it carries 32 marks of your entire 100 marks so this is very very important and this is where students actually have a lot of confusion and struggle but now in this particular class i'll be giving you an acronym that you can actually use to interpret your ratios so this acronym is not like a do or die affair but it's just a a pattern that you can actually use so we have the pattern thick thick the, the first one is what f stands for financial trend i stands for industry trend and c stands for company trend so you can analyze or interpret your ratios using this particular acronym so now let's look at how we can actually use it practically so the first one is the financial trend right so in this case you interpret it using the ratio itself now i use an example here the gross margin ratio is the cost towards the gross profit divided by the revenue right now in this case look at what's happening here in year two we had gross profit was 50 revenue was 100 it was 50 percent in year one gross profit was five revenue was two and we had gross margin ratio of 25 percent so now you have calculated this in your appendix how do you now analyze it using the financial trend now let's look at that together you can see something like the gross margin ratio increased from 25 percent in year one to 50 percent in year two due to the significant increase in revenue from 20 naira in year one to 100 naira in year two which consequently led to the increase in gross margin now look at this in year one in year one we had a gross profit of five in year two we had a gross profit of 50. in year one you had gross revenue of 20. in year two we had revenue of 100. so you can see that 
the gross profit increased significantly because what? The revenue increased from 20 naira to 100 naira. That's a significant increase. So that you have said it here that, okay, the revenue from 20 naira to 100 naira is the reason why gross margin ratio increased. Now you have analyzed using the financial trend, the ratios. Now, how do you analyze in the industry trend? Now, in the pre scene, you'll be given information about what, what things are happening in industry, what's happening in industry, what's obtainable in the industry, and all of that. We give information about that, right? So, in that in the pre scene, you have to extract information, even if that, and that's one thing about the pre scene. I always tell people that when you get your pre scene, aside the information that is given in the pre scene, look at the industry that the company is actually operating. They will definitely, you will definitely know from the pre scene, the industry, the company that you are assessing is operating in. Go and look at it. What are the challenges that are obtainable in the industry? What are the challenges that are, are, are occurring in the industry, rather? They look at it. So what are the strengths in the industry? What are the, the progress that is being made in the industry in current times? This helps you to actually analyze your, your reports, analyze your, your calculations. So now, in this case, you can see something like the revenue increased from 6% in 2022 to 14% in 2023 due to the high demand for agricultural products in year 2023. So if you have something like, oh, you, you, you were told or from your research, you found out that revenue is increasing or you found out that there's high demand, there was high demand for agricultural products in 2023. That's something you can say, ah, okay, revenue is increasing. Obviously, if revenue is increasing, and I also telling us that we have high demand for agricultural products, then it's definitely going to actually affect revenue positively. So this is something you can say, oh, the increase in revenue was actually due to the increase in, in demand for agricultural products in year three, in year 2023, rather. So that's how you analyze using the industry trend. How do you analyze in the company trend? Let's look at that. Now, in the pre scene as well, you'll be given information about the company, its operations, its history, everything that they are doing. So you can also analyze using the words, using the company trend. You can see something like this. The current asset of XYZ Limited increased significantly in year three due to the acquisition of plants and equipment for the new branch in Abuja. So now, let's say they gave you something like, oh, in the, the company actually opened a new branch in new branch in abuja and as a result they actually acquired new plants and equipment so you can see oh the increase in non-current assets obviously is because they actually acquired new plants and equipment for the branch in abuja and that's increasing so can you see what i'm saying so that's how you can actually analyze so if you analyze this and sometimes you can actually combine the three and in some cases you may not combine the three imagine you have said financial trend about the particular ratio you have talked about the industry trend you have talked about the company trend <laughs> my dear friend my dear future ACA, you have written up to six lines and then you are good to go. You are good to go. So now the next thing is how to know the suitable ratio to compute. Now this is the most tricky, this is the tricky part. Like this is the tricky aspect because how will you know what to compute? Now the threat I do than the fact, there is nothing like one way ratio. There's nothing like, oh, this ratio is important in all aspects. There's some ratios that will be important in some aspects. And there's some issues that will not be important in some aspects. Now, how do you not know in that sense? Because we still have to know, right? So in this situation, ask yourself, what are the ratios that will sufficiently meet the requirements? What are the ratios that will sufficiently meet the requirements? So you have, you have a requirement that is asking you to evaluate the performance of XYZ Limited. Obviously, if you're evaluating the performance, you have to think, okay, how well are they generating profit you know you're doing profitability ratios okay how well are they meeting the short-term obligations you know you're doing liquidity ratios okay are they actually mixing debt and equity how can i because you know if they're mixing too much debt too it can actually affect their going concern okay how well are they doing that so you already know that so those ratios are already popping in your head i already know idea you are starting to have ideas of the kind of ratios that will be suitable for that particular requirement. So the first thing is understand your requirement and know the most suitable ratio that will fit in. The next one is what? Who is the recipient of your report? What interests them? Now, if you are paying a report for an investor, obviously an investor may not be concerned about some certain things, but an investor definitely will be concerned about the profits. How well are they generating profits? An investor will definitely be concerned about the, his own investor ratios. What is my dividend per share? What is the dividend payout ratio? What is my return on equity? What is many, many questions? What is my earnings per share? And all of that. So you definitely know that investor ratio is a must. So now the recipient of your report is very, very important. In most case studies, the recipient of the report is usually the board of directors. 
that's why I say that in most times, in most case studies, they'll, they'll calculate or they'll compute profitability ratios, you'll see liquidity ratios, you'll see something because the board of directors are, not, are the owners of the company. They are, they are part of the owners of the company. The board of directors, you, know, you have executive directors, you have non-executive directors. That one is just another ball game entirely. But these are people that are in control in the company, right? So they want to know every aspect of the company. So most times, that's why you see, so the recipient of your report also helps you to determine the suitable ratio to compute. Now, what are the common mistakes? The first one is what? Quantity over quality. You do not need too many ratios. You hear somebody saying, I computed 15 profitability ratios, four liquidity ratios, then solvency ratios are, ah, in fact, that means in total you are computing almost 40 ratios. Con con quality over quantity is very, very important. Don't do quantity over quality. You don't need too many ratios to satisfy the requirement. Just look for, okay, the categories are important and you don't need up to three, four ratios or at most four ratios per category. It helps you to what? Reasonably satisfy the requirement and analyze it very, very well. So because of time, time constraint. Second one is what? Focusing on calculations, not interpretations. Interpretations carry higher marks. Higher marks. Interpretations carry 32 marks. Your calculation is just eight marks. Yes, calculation is very, very important because if you are calculating errors, you will definitely interpret error, right? So, but then focus on interpretation very, very well. Don't just write one, one line or something and then you just have half a page for your entire financial statement analysis. Ha, ha, ha. Fine, you don't need... 10, 20 pages, but at least have at least substantial amount of interpretation in that sense. The next one is what? Inaccurate interpretation. You have to interpret the ratio properly. You cannot interpret inaccurately. Interpret it properly in that sense. Do you get so? And how can you interpret it properly? You are, well, I've given you an acronym, which is the FIC, right? And I'm also giving you the uses. So the uses of the ratios or the purpose of the ratio also can be used to interpret it as well. And finally, not focusing on the requirements. You have to ensure that you compute ratios that meet the requirements. The ones that meet the requirements, what is not asked, what is not requested, what is not required, what the examiner does not need, you don't need to calculate it. So focus on the requirements. Don't do what is not expected of you. And that's just basically all about ratios. So that's just all about our class today. I hope you learned a lot. Did you learn a lot? Wow, that's nice. So if you learned a lot, please. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Hit the like button, comment, share, turn on your notification bell to get updates of my new videos. And I'll see you in my next class. Bye.